Hello, my creeplings. We're just going to get into it today. Suffice to say, I found a good one. It's a, um, more, it is a modern horror. You know how I tend to like the things in, we call it the 80s and 90s slashers. Um, this one is a millennial, or new horror, whatever you want to call it. It's actually more of an action movie with horror overtones, but let's just get into it. I just watched Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter for like the 10th time. Um, I actually really like this film. And I'm not a big fan of some of the things that they do cinematography stuff and wise, cinematography wise and stuff in here. But this was a good one. Um, released in June of 2012, so it's not that old. Um, directed by, and I apologize, I'm going to butcher this guy's name. Directed by Timur Bekmambetov. We're just going to call him Timur or Timmy. Um, written by Seth Graham Smith based on his, um, I think it was a novel. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. Um, Tim Burton was one of the producers on this, so... It had some name, some names behind it. It had some power behind it, and from what it looks like, it did pretty good. Made one hundred sixteen point four million at the box office, but to be honest, the budget was huge on this. So some would say it's a flop. I still think if you made that much money, you did pretty good. Um. So, cast list on this. Really great. Um, Benjamin Walker plays Abraham Lincoln as an adult. I not was not familiar with him before this. I really haven't seen him in much after this. Again, in the circles of stuff that I watch. Uh, pretty solid, though. Um, Dominic Cooper plays Henry Sturgis. Now, I am most familiar with Dominic Cooper <laughs> as Tony Stark's father in Agent Carter. And, um... The Captain America, D, uh, not DC. Sorry, I, um, I just kind of lost my comic book nerd cred. I almost said DC instead of Marvel. Um, we have Anthony Mackie, another Marvel alum, uh, as Will Johnson. We have Mary Elizabeth Winstead, uh, let's see. TV show, Wolf Lake, which ran for a season on CBS, Sky High, the Disney uh, movie about superhero teen, superpowered teenagers. Um, she was in one of the most recent Star Wars things is uh, Harrison Dula with um, Ahsoka. I keep wanting to say it was the Acolyte because that's like really, really recent. And I believe she's also Mrs. Obi-Wan Kenobi right now. I think she and Ewan McGregor are married. I know they're, they were together. Um, we have Rufus... I, I want to pronounce it Sewell, but it might be Sewell. As Adam, he's, the one, he's our major antagonist here. He's been in a lot, and about everything I have seen him in, I have liked him in. A uh, wonderful British actor. We got a Kiwi actor. Martin Sakis? I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his last name right or, or wrong. Uh, he is most known to people as Lord Celeborn in Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring. Xena fans will recognize him as more than a couple of things, but I believe Boreas might have been his biggest role. Uh, he was in the Aeon Flux live action. Dude works pretty solidly, and I always like him when he does stuff like this. We have Jimmy Simpson as Joshua Speed. Jimmy Simpson, you know, he shows up in a lot of stuff that I've seen. <clears throat> the TV series Rose Red, based on the Stephen King uh, screenplay. He played kind of a dickhead in that. Uh, there was another movie in the early 2000s he played a dickhead. Uh, he's not a dickhead in this one, though. I actually, when he plays those roles, the dickheads, I, I, he does his job well. I find myself not liking him. Um, but I liked him in this one. He's, he was a very affable guy. Um, an actor named Joseph Mall has played 
Thomas Lincoln, Abe's father, an actress named Robin McLeavy, McLeavy, excuse me, played Nancy Lincoln. I recognized her from AMC's Hell on Wheels, so I'd seen her before. Um, Aaron Wasson plays Vodoma, one of our other vampires. Um, and Alan Tudyk makes a little small appearance as Stephen A. Douglas. I love Alan Tudyk. He's another one of them that's like, this is what just kind of tells me that, girl, you're never going to really be behind the headliners. You are a character actor bitch and just admit it. Because Alan Tudyk is a treasure. Um, and he, I mean, the man has a knack for creating voices and mannerisms and he just, he sells you on this one. It's a smaller part, but it's like he walked in on screen and I went, dude, it's Tudyk! And I was immediately entranced. So, now that I'm done gushing about the cast list, because the cast list was really solid. All that money and Tim Burton producing behind it really will get you a good cast. Um, so, we start out with uh, Abe Lincoln as a child in 1818. So, it gives you an idea. They're in a they live in Indiana on a plantation owned by a man named Jack Bart. So this is the Morton, Martin Sockus character. Um, Lincoln's got a friend named William Johnson, Anthony Mackey's character. Um, there's an altercation where William Johnson is beaten by a slaver trying to uh, um, basically take him into slavery, even though he was born a free, a free man. I apologize to any of my non-U.S. viewers here who don't um, know, like, the minutia of the American Civil War, because we're going to be dealing with a lot of American Civil War here. Um, and I'm not going to go into a deep history lesson, but... Indiana, the southern Indiana, was like one of those, if I remember correctly, it was one of those, it was a free state, but it was so close to the south that we would often have escaped slaves end up there. And pre-1820s, 1830s, I believe, um, there were laws that allowed for owners to send bounty hunters to collect escaped slaves. Um... I could be wrong on my dates on that, but I am relatively sure that was a thing. Uh, the Civil War area is not one of my areas of expertise. Not that I have an expertise in anything, but it's not something that I uh, have heavily researched in my lifetime. Um, so, the Lincolns intervene. Thomas gets fired. Um, that night... Abe is not asleep in the uh, loft like he's supposed to be. And he sees Bartz, Jack Bartz, attack his mother, who ends up dying from the bite. So, we go fast forward to nine years later. Lincoln's a young man. Um, he is, you know, drinking in a bar to get courage to, you know, attack Bartz, and he's approached by a man named Henry Sturgis. Henry Sturgis makes the comment, the only way, a man, the only reason a man is drinking like that is to either kiss a girl or kill a man, which is it? Turns out, Lincoln's gonna go and try and kill Bartz, finds out he's a vampire, but he's rescued by Henry. Um, Henry tells him what's up. Bartz was a vampire. Oh, by the way, Lincoln failed to kill Bartz. Bartz was a vampire. Vampires are, you know, thriving in the South, using the slaves as, basically, food source. And um, they're trying to keep pushing North. Um, Henry is going, has volunteered to train Lincoln as a vampire hunter. So, Lincoln tells him what he, want, what he wants to hear so he can get revenge. 
and thus becomes the training montage. Um, actually, it's not so much an 80s style montage, but there's training involved. Um, they train for about a decade, and they travel to Springfield. Now, Sturgis also, Henry Sturgis also gives Lincoln the information that the vampires in the United States descend from a vampire named Adam. He owns a plantation in New Orleans with his sister, Vidoma. Um, he reveals the vampire's weaknesses as silver and presents him with the silver pocket watch that's engraved on the inside. I cannot remember what the engraving says and I forgot to write it down. So, Lincoln goes to Springfield, gets a job with um, Joshua Speed and rents the room above him, above his shop. But at night, he hunts vampires that Henry Sturgis sends him to kill. So they, uh, he sends him a letter. It's this guy. Go after him. Get him. And um, Sturgis is telling him, you know, don't form too many close relationships. You'll never have a family. You can't trust anybody. All because of this job, you know, this job he's chosen to take of, va of vampire hunting. Um... In the shop, uh, Lincoln meets Mary Todd and uh, her, um, I think at the time, kind of beau, Stephen A. Douglas, played by Alan Tudyk, who's a politician. Um, so we have Abe falling in love with Mary and kind of getting a political rivalry with um, Douglas. While killing vampires at night, it's really fun to watch. It really is. Um, he fi he, he's finally sent to go kill Bart's. But he also learns at about this time, when he, just before he puts Bart's out for good, that Sturgis. Henry Sturgis is also a vampire. Um, so Lincoln goes to um, confront him. And we get Sturgis' backstory where his, fam his wife was killed by Adam and he was turned. And vampires cannot kill other vampires. Kind of like some defect of, of God, I think is what Adam said. So Sturgis trains vampire hunters to go out and cull the herd, so to speak. So he can get his revenge. It's all, This is all a revenge game for Sturgis and Lincoln now. Um, he feels betrayed, so Abe decides to abandon the mission and uh, go about his life. But unfortunately, Adam has figured out who the vampire hunter is, i.e. Abe. And he lures him into a trap at his plantation in New Orleans by kidnapping, um, Will. And, um, there's speed and finally gets let in on, on the, uh, on what's going on, on the, the, op, the nightlife, I guess, um, so Speed and Lincoln go downriver to New Orleans to rescue Will, and Adam kind of sets a trap for him, but Lincoln, they end up escaping, but not before Adam offers to um, recruit him to his cause of basically turning America undead. He wants his kind to rule the, the nation. And not, pro probably the world after that, you know, world domination. <laughs> Lincoln refuses and Speed res rescues both of them. It, it's, it's an, it, um, a buggy through the plantation. It's a really neat action scene. Um, so Lincoln marries Mary and he starts his political career. Slowly working his way up through the ranks. He campaigns to abolish slavery. Everybody in the United States knows the basics about Amer uh, Abe Lincoln. 
He's against slavery. He started off splitting rails uh, and doing humble work and became uh, studied for law, got into politics, campaigned to become president, became president, and abolished slavery. Okay, so that brings you up on the very basics of Abraham Lincoln and American history. Um, so... Oh, excuse me. Ew. Now, Henry's warning him that the slave trade keeps the vampires under control because it's their food source, but he's like, no. Slavery is wrong and we're getting rid of it. Um, at this time, when he wins the presidency, they have a son, um, William. Um... Vodoma sneaks in and bites Willie um, when he's young, and he dies. Same thing. Same thing as Abe's mother. Now, William Jefferson Davis, uh, president of the Confederacy, is in league with Adam, and uh, Adam sends basically vampires to the front lines, and this is. This parallels where the South seemed to feel like it was getting an upper hand in the war in history. They're giving this as the reason. Um, Lincoln has, he's like, we can't beat them if they've got vampires. What are we going to do? And he has this brilliant realization at the table holding a fork. Because they didn't have stainless steel back then. Cutlery was made from sterling silver. And he had this brilliant idea to confiscate all the silver they could, turn it into weapons, and send it to their soldiers. Now, Speed, supposedly, um, betrays Lincoln by informing Adam that the tr about the train transporting the weapons. Which... Adam is, of course, going to attack with his legions of vampires. And they're going to set the, the bridge trestle on fire just to make sure. This is where the, all the big action happens. Now, I am going to criticize the action scenes a little bit. And it's not so much technique as my taste. Um, ever since The Matrix came out. Action movies really like to rely on that. We're going to take a minute and slow everything down and either follow a bullet or, in this case, flying daggers or a flying um, hatchet, things like that. This movie kind of overuses that a little bit. I don't really like it to begin with, but they really like to use it in this one. So if you're not a fan of that, just a warning. Take a note. Um, this also has, uh, when it comes to effects, it's a CGI thing. It's not very practical, which was the other drawback, because I'm a more of a practical effects girl. If they're cleaned up by CGI, that's one thing. So, the blood effects, it's, it's all CGI. Um, and you see a lot of, like, flying slow-mo blood and stuff in this particular last action scene on the train. Um... So during the fight, we unfortunately end up losing speed. Uh, the train is pretty much destroyed. Sturgis shows up trying to tell Abe that speed betrayed him. There's a fight with Sturgis and Adam in one of the rail cars where they both, Sturgis and Adam, figure out that it was a lie. They're not transporting silver. It was a decoy. So, um, Abe kills him with his silver pocket watch. It's a really cool kind of, Adam gasses out, and Abe just grabs the watch, wraps the chain around his hand, and punches into where he thinks Adam is, and turns out he was right. And the, it's, it's, it's pretty cool, kind of tropey, but pretty cool anyway. I mean, for a popcorn movie, expect some tropiness. The silver was actually being transported by Mary Todd, Harriet Tubman, and 
several ex-slaves on the Underground Railroad. The hidden trails and stops that they used in the Civil War era to f bring escaped slaves to freedom in the North. Um, more than one kind of railroad. Um, they they transport the silver weapons to Gettysburg, which was the turning point of the war for the North. So they line this up really nicely with the actual historical dates and time frames. So if you are a fan of, of Civil War history, you might get a kick out of how all this lines up. Um, now, while they're at the army camp delivering all the weapons, Mary recognizes that Vidoma, because she snuck into the camp, she manages to kill her by taking, she has a, a necklace, silver necklace of one of Willie's uh, toy soldiers' bayonets, rips it off, drops it into a, a musket barrel, shoots Vidoma in the head with it. So armed with the silver weapons, of course, anybody who remembers Civil War history knows that Gettysburg is where the tide was turned. This is why in this world. And um, so, yay, the, the, the war is going to be over soon. So two year, so we jump two years ahead on April 14th, 1865. Um, Lincoln celebrates the end of the war as Sturgis informs him that the remaining vampires have fled. Um, and tries to for, to con convince Lincoln to be turned so they can fight evil forever. Um, Abe declines, and he and Mary go out on their night on the town to a play. Again, my, my American history buffs know exactly what happened that night. Uh, a man named John Wilkes Booth shot Lincoln in the back of the head in their box, and he died shortly after. So, had Henry convinced him, we might not have had that issue. But, uh, we'll never know, will we? So, now we go forward to modern, modern, <laughs> modern times. Sturgis is still hanging out in bars. He's still around. And, um, we, the guy next to him is drinking. And Henry goes right up to him and he says, either... One man, a man drinks that much to kiss a girl or kill her man. Which one is it? And he goes and pats him on the back real hard and a gun falls out. So it looks like Henry might have his next, uh, recruit. Um, so yeah, I, okay. I, I enjoy popcorn movies and this is like a popcorn movie to me. This kind of has like an LXG feel to it. Um, this is a very action-oriented... Like I said, this is more of an action movie than a horror movie, but it is vampire-centric. All the performances were very well done. The cinematography... It's a good movie. There's just things I don't like about creative choices, but, but they're, they were popular. Um, like the overuse of CGI for its effects and um, the slow-mo during the action scenes. Now, I believe this was also released in 3D, so you're going to have things coming at you in slow-mo on the camera and everything. I can do without that, but I understand um, that was the trend, trying to get butts in the seats. It got a decent amount of butts in the seats, but it didn't make its money back. Um, so if you like action movies with a horror over overlay, like if you're a big fan of, like I said, uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, LXG. If you like Blade with Wesley Snipes, um, things like that, I think you'll like this. Um, if you're a big fan of any of the actors in here, they all give great performances. I think you'll like this. I'm recommending it for those kids that want to get into horror, but you're kind of not wanting to give them too much gore. This is a good one. This is a good, solid one for that. I don't think there's any bad language. And, um, there's implications of naughty stuff going on, but I don't think there's any outright boobs or anything. So, 
Yeah, this would be a good one for tweens, I think. I really do. Uh, so, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Really good action horror film. Um, I highly recommend it. So, I'm going to leave it at that. And I'm just going to say it. A good night, my creeplings. And say it with me. I'll see you next time. Bye.